this is um this is a little bit of a homecoming for a band by the name of Cage the Elephant. Matt and Brad, welcome back to Washington D.C. Thanks for having us. I was just saying, from the nine thirty club to to now. Yeah, this is a. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I want to ask you guys. Um, do you enjoy playing small venues where you are up close and personal? If you wanted, to, if you wanted to spit a loogie, um, there might be somebody on the receiving end of that because they're so close. Do you like small club venues? We actually prefer people. To spit <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't us. want to spit on loogies. Like <laughs> <laughs> we prefer the loogies projected um, towards towards. Us. I like I like both situations, like being being um, in intimate scenarios and also. Um, festivals or bigger spaces, but those kind of intimate experiences can happen in in both places. That kind of the way you came off of that, you said I kind of enjoy both experiences. And we were talking about loogies being spit on someone. No, the, the original question was about the intimacy <laughs> of the space. Uh, <laughs> um, but getting a loogie spit on, or if you're doing the spitting, that's an experience. What about spitting a loogie on yourself? I've never done. Actually, if you went into it. Beforehand, both agreeing in agreement that you were going to spit loogies in each other's faces and back and forth. Or imagine it could be like I don't know, playing in the rain or something. <laughs> I did that the other day. <laughs> we just renovated our powder room at the house. It's very dark and very nice, just small. And I was um, eliminating in the. I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah. I was going to the bathroom, and while you're peeing, do you ever just like spit into the toilet? No. Oh, you don't? Do you? Um, I can't remember. I don't, well, think about that the next time. But I spit <laughs> on my shirt. It didn't go in the toilet. It went on my shirt. Oh, you know something gross? Yeah. I uh, one time I uh, had a bad sinus infection and I just kept on spit. I would get up and I'd like hawk loogies into the sink, and then it coated my sink hole so bad that it clogged it up. What? <laughs> yeah. That and is and I had to disgusting. Legit, it, it, and like, it, when did that with, happen? Not even with Drano. Could, was that, could defeat was that it. a long time ago? I had a, yeah. Okay, good. Back in Imagine the if you're <laughs> the one that was cleaning that drain out later. I hope I you've done, I you're doing better. I was uh, when I, w this is a funny little gross kind of story. <laughs> for me. When, I, when we were kids, um, you know those like the um, uh, car f air freshener things? And so there was one my dad had in um, in his car, and I really liked the smell. I was like, I want to smell that forever. <laughs> so I stuck it up my nose and sprayed it. Oh my god! And like all the mucus in my nose, like shot in my hand, it like filled both of my hands. Oh you know? my god! I was like five, so small hands, but still, it was pretty. Matt, wild. what does it smell like today? Because <laughs> I'm sure it's still coated the inside of your nasal cavity. Uh, I don't know. I don't. But I I do have better smell now. So. Lost its Christmas appeal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guess what's 228 days old today? What? The year. No, social cues. Oh. Uh, this is, we're coming up on social cues very first Christmas. What are you going to do for it? Mm. Hmm. Do you have anything planned? It's still, uh, can it crawl yet? I don't know. You ever thought about that? <laughs> I Did I sort of swerve you a little bit? No, I like I like that idea because I think that you should be able to play with your albums forever and it shouldn't have to be finished. 228 days old isn't that old. Mm. No, no. But it has captured the ear holes of a lot of people. And I love it. And I can't wait to see you guys play Thank some you. of it. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite songs uh, is, is a song. Have you ever heard of it? It's called Dance Dance. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. You heard of it? That was, that was one of, that was one of the, the more fun uh, ones to write on the record. We, we had been, a lot of times when you're writing a record, you're exploring and you have these ideas going into it, and then there's a point in which, like the kind of like, the character of the album starts to take shape. Mm. And um, John had came out. To John Hill, who produced the record, came out to Nashville, and we was Dance Dance, Broken Boy, and Social Cues all in the, like a day or two, and that really kind of set the course of the record. Yeah, two dose. Doesn't that feel good at the end of that second day where you have a couple of those songs, and you go back in, and certainly they're not fully mixed but is it called a rough cut or you call it a rough cut i don't even know i'm just using like studio talk that right sounds now. right but when you hear it back <laughs> i know when, when you hear it back are you like oh damn we've got something and this is pretty awesome a little bit of that there's some of us this could be awesome it could also be the worst thing we've <laughs> yeah. ever yeah. done yeah, yeah. but, but it's kind of like when you set yeah, yeah sorry no you go ahead it's like if you set sail off to a new land you get like so far away from the shore, like, oh wow, there's really, there's really no going back now. I guess. <laughs> Why would well, you? On this record too, because it was such a, such a long process, 
that we were there there were so many swings of emotions where we'd be like Woo, we've done it. We pushed ourselves to the limit. And then like two weeks later, we're like, I don't know. I don't know if we have anything. You live, you live with it for a while. Are we on the right path? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say you have been on the right path. I have a question about the album art because I like when I like buying vinyl and I still like buying CDs, dude, because I like to read the little stories. And um, Did the outfit you're wearing on the album cover, did that come from your own closet? And where else would you ever wear that? I did, um, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> no, um, I had, um, when we were touring with the Stones in Paris. I'm sorry, and, I have to stop you right there. <laughs> I mean, come on, who the hell just says when we were touring with the Rolling Stones? That to me, you know what that says to me? Um, Cage the Elephant, like, you have absolutely, and this was years ago, have come into your own, and I love that. I love having a conversation with you guys where you're just like, hey, when we were on the road touring with the Stones, like, what a nice compliment you are to them, and quite frankly, they are to you. What if you didn't go to see the Rolling Stones, you went to see Cage the Elephant, and you were turned on to the Rolling Stones? I don't think that anyone there came to see yeah, us yeah. and turned on to the Stones, <laughs> but I do appreciate okay, the thought. Okay, okay. That's very nice. The whole, to the whole time that you, we were talking <laughs> about this, I could only imagine Matt in that red suit just doing day-to-day -day chores. Like cooking, <laughs> cleaning out somebody's well, bathroom I was, I was sink, <laughs> cleaning the bathroom, cleaning the like your sink hawked with loogies and like. Oh, oh god. god! Well, <laughs> I was um just experimenting with characters and stuff, and um me and Kane, our photographer, did this uh, project that was called Never So Lonely in Paris, and I like chugged a bottle of wine, and then. Walked around in Paris. He took pictures. Awesome, of me. and it like it it got really dark, but we kind of wanted to capture like what that moment in life was kind of looking like. Yeah. And the next morning, um, we went to get a cup of coffee, and we were um, the coffee shop was right in front of like uh, what do you call it? Um, it's like a sex shop or whatever. And so adult novelties is that what it, uh. a novelty shop? So he um he had taken a picture, and um there were the things in the background, and I thought that was pretty strange uh it would just looked strange um and i had thought that it was it was strange how um things that had been considered taboo for so long were so sociably acceptable uh to talk about or to present as art and mm -hmm. yet to talk about real matters of the heart like love and and hate and where we are and um as human beings without it getting uh pulled into a, a political space um that uh, I just found that to be very interesting. And so um, I bought the suit and I bought a red suit and then the concept was just that you could um, wear this suit that w essentially was made for a certain kind of um, uh, time and that you could wear that and present that as art but you couldn't talk about love. Uh, I thought it felt so so uh, strange to talk about love, so. Is that conversation a little easier every day, right? Um, I don't know. I think it, it depends on, is it easier? I think it is. Um, one of the things is you're, you're talking about that, uh, that I was thinking about is weed. Mm. Um, I may or may not have been about eight years old in the backyard of a buddy's house. Just like wondering, you know, like just maybe just taking a couple of hits off just a hand rolled cigarette made of cannabis. Mm. But I was so freaked out. Oh my God, the cops are going to come. And now it's like not a big deal. And it's like, that really hasn't been but 20 years. Mm -hmm. Do you remember having the conversation years and years ago? Like, oh, dude, it'll never be legalized. Mm -hmm. And now that's just part of the fabric of our, of our country. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think in that vein, maybe uh, that conversation about sex and love and everything in between uh, is a bit more pliable. Um, I don't know. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, it's not so taboo. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, for myself, it, at least I questioned... I question um, the legitimacy of like a space to to talk about love freely and have a conversation. Um, I'm curious um, perspective versus reality and like yeah. w those kinds of things. It even feels cheesy to to say the word love sometimes in a sincere way. Um, I mean, it w we we say I love you all the time, like oh I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, but to really talk about love. Um, uh, interesting. Well, I think when you hear music 
from a band like yours, that sort of opens the door a bit to making it a bit easier to have that conversation. I hope so. You know? Uh, I'm not trying to, like... Big time, anybody? Today's my wife's birthday. Oh. Yeah. Hey, there uh, you go. Well, I'm I'm going somewhere with this. I promise. Um, but I posted on social media. I you know I love you and a couple of other things. And yesterday I ordered some flowers. <laughs> and the lady's like, Hey, what do you want on the message card? And love was one of the words. And I felt a little weird saying it. Right. So I made a joke to sort of break the ice. Right. But I think that's exactly what you're talking about, dude. Isn't that strange? And so then I followed it up. Yeah, I'm sure you hear cheesy guys calling all the time and using that or you know whatever. Isn't that, isn't that funny, though? Yeah, it is. So it's, it's interesting point, where the world is today, right? Yeah. Diction is out the window. Words don't really mean anything anymore. Use them how you want. It's really interesting. This is another personal question. Are you cool with it? Are you uh, going to wear I those? I don't know. Well, okay, so you don't have to answer <laughs> Ask the question first, okay. and are then you gonna I'll wear tell those, you. Are you going to wear those shoes tonight when you perform? Um, or are you going to change it to some Probably boots? not. Because when you launch yourself from the stage where you guys are performing and you go into the crowd do you ever worry about losing your shoes um i usually take nice shoes i usually take the shoes off you ever lost a shoe yes yeah one (laughs) shoe and then you don't have the pair this was the uh so years and years ago we were playing a show at a festival and i crowd surfed and somebody taking one of my shoes and i only (laughs) had one pair of shoes and i was like i was like what makes people think they could just take a person's shoes? Because we, <laughs> <laughs> we had a flight the next morning, like 5 a.m. I didn't have any shoes. If we were going to go straight to the, uh, it was too late to get oh, a new God. pair of shoes. And then we were going to catch a flight too early <laughs> to, um, to grab shoes in the morning. And so I was like, what do I do? <laughs> get on the plane with those shoes? So I was so angry <laughs> that I, I grabbed the other shoe and I threw it as far <laughs> as I could. <laughs> And right then, the sweet person came to me and was like, I found your shoe. Yeah, and I just like, found the other one. Seconds later. And, but the funny thing is, then, then another person came up and gave me my other shoe. So. Then you were good. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we're talking with Matt and Brad, who make music under the name uh, Cage the Elephant. Um, Brad, do you, like, do you like cats? Do you have any cats? No, I don't have cats, but I like them. Matt, do you like cats? I like cats. Um, I'd like to give you my cat pen. Ooh. This is a rock and roll cat. Sick. Oh, nice. I like it. Can I give it to you? Yes. Do you think you'd ever wear it? I would. Don't say it if you don't mean it. I, I'm not. I well, wait a minute. Me. I only have one pen, so it's like. Matt, yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt collects more trinkets than me. This I, is a very personal trinket. I do have trinket. lots of trinkets. Here's this pen. Thank you. I would love to see you wear it sometime. I will. I'll put, I'll put this little right piggy now. went to the market. Little piggy stayed home. Hey, is there anybody else in the world of music that you haven't worked with yet that you want to work with? A lot of people. Oh, gosh, a lot. Is it, who's at the top of the list? Because I love the collaboration. Uh, By the way, your tour with Beck this past summer. Top of the list is hard. It's incredible. Thank you. you know, Brian Eno would be a person for me I'd really like to work with. David Bowie, if he was still alive. Yeah, rest yeah. in peace, dude. Um, I'd love to work with... Uh, um, I really would I'd love, love to work with ASAP Rocky. Yeah, ASAP Rocky... Um, um, I would love to work with Death Grips, uh, with, um, uh, it'd be cool to do a record with, uh, Pavement, um, yeah, I think. Andre 3000. Andre 3000. Mm. Wouldn't that be an interesting collaboration? The Fugees, that would be sick. I do love the fact that you collaborated with Beck. Or he collaborated with you, and I loved the tour from the past summer. We actually summer. have a secret little collaboration coming out soon. We do. I also would like to uh, work with Kanye West, I think, and, and Chance the Rapper, and uh, see who else. It would be sick to do to work. I mean, if if she, if she's still alive, Nina Simone, that would be tight. But uh, I'll get, uh, yeah. You do you want to keep the Tom Waits? Secret? You want you want to you want you want you want to clue? You got the brain. I'll give you a, I'll give you a clue. What? It's pop, but it's not poppy. What? <laughs> it's I pop, but not poppy. Well, you know what? Let's just marry like it on poppy. that. I like poppy. I think no, everything's no, poppy. No, I'm, sa- I'm saying the collaboration. I said that's the clue. Oh. It's pop, but it's not poppy. We will uh, marinate on that, and then when that news <laughs> breaks, I can't wait to... I don't know what that even means. <laughs> hey, I also want to thank you guys for participating in a Black Friday sale. Oh, yeah. On the internet, on yeah. your website. The merch store. I participated in that. 
You did? But I would participate in it even if it was 100% full price. Like tonight, I'm buying, I, I buy t shirts, dude. We actually set the prices for everything. No, did you, we? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you don't. I'm pretty gullible. We're hands on with all aspects. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm so excited to have Black Cage Friday, the jack the prices up. <laughs> yeah. That's what throw I them say. down as much as you can to make people <laughs> believe they got a discount. <laughs> yeah. You guys, I don't know how long until you guys have to work tonight. You've been working it all day. Thank you for just hanging out on this couch, drinking this complimentary bottled water. Oh, yeah. And um, I drank almost the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. So thanks for, uh, for hanging out and um, participating in this thanks conversation. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks I'm having very us. happy that you guys are here and playing a show for uh, DC 101. So thank you. Yeah, DC this is has fun. always been a city that we love to come to. Yes. The last time I saw you guys was two summers ago at uh, Lollapalooza, and it was 500 degrees outside. But you still look damn good. <laughs> it rains every time we go to Lollapalooza, too, though. Have you, uh, I like that. I, it, I, I like, like the rain. Too. We Bring on the rain. <laughs> Enjoy your set tonight. I can't wait to watch you guys on a stage and have your uh, instruments playing very loud. Thank you. Thank you. I promise I will get as loud as I can. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.